Y'all hear that? There's no trailer park kids. This is Marina and I am currently living in a dream. If you are confused, I encourage you to go watch the last video I posted. I'll have it linked down below. Um, but short story long, this is me living the dream. We have been trailer park dwellers for the last six or seven years of our life. And I'm not used to the quiet here. <laughs> We have acreage now and I'm not used to the quiet here. I know that y'all are as excited as I am, so without further ado, let me give you a tour of our brand new to us 1991 double wide mobile home. Where do I even start? This house has everything I could ever dream of. I told you guys in the last video, whenever I went to tell God my plans <laughs> and what I wanted, I had a list of things in my mind. It wasn't a very big list, but it was a list of things that I asked him one day. I was like, God, if it's in your will, can I have X, Y, Z <laughs> kind of thing? And um, he gave me X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Right now, I'm currently on the ginormous covered porch. This house has two back porches and a front little like area. This porch, when I walked up on it the first time we ever came here, I was like, this is the coolest porch in the world. Like, I, I have like rose colored glasses on with this house. I'm telling you, it is such a blessing. In the middle of the porches here, there is a garden and it goes from one porch to the other and eventually because i don't have a green thumb i have a dead thumb <laughs> when it comes to plants eventually those will all be knocked out because the lady who lived here before us was amazing at plants and everything else and i am not so i'm not even going to be able to do that justice we're just going to knock it all out and we're going to continue this porch to meet that porch and eventually wrap the porch around the entire mobile home. That's big plans, big future plans. With this double wide being a 1991, it is extremely outdated. It has not been updated at all, which is another thing I had on my list when asking God for a home. You guys know I love DIYs. I love making my home into its own space. I like having my family's input in my home. So having a 1991 blank canvas is literally a dream situation for me. It's literally a dream situation for me. I'm so excited to get in there and get our hands dirty and just totally change this thing into my mobile mansion 2.0 because my first mobile mansion was in a little single lot in a trailer park. This is going to be mobile mansion 2.0 we're gonna go in here and we're going to knock out walls. We are gonna do outdoor projects. We're gonna do structural projects. We're gonna do everything in between because we not only own this mobile home, but we also own the land that I saw. So we're virtually free to do whatever we want versus whenever we lived in a trailer park, we only had a rectangle to our name and it was a rented rectangle to our name. So now we got do, square to our name. So right? now now we have like it's actually the size of Texas. The way that it's made out is like <laughs> it looks like Texas on a map. Originally <laughs> originally I had asked God for five acres and I learned very quickly when going to look at another home. We only looked at two homes. This was the second one. I learned very quickly when going to look at another home. Me and Shane looked at each other and we were like, we're not five acre land kind of people. <laughs> I wish we were but we're not. So along with this double wide we have almost two and a half acres and that is more than enough for us i'm thinking llamas i'm thinking all sorts of things shane just left me i'm thinking what are you doing i'm thinking all sorts of things and if you're one like this is why we're not land people i've got to get used a big girl has got to get used to being outside because i am dripping the sweat and it's not even that hot out here walking this land is going to help me lose weight though i say it out there in jesus name i put it out there in jesus name <laughs> it's gonna help me lose weight remember how on lives you guys kept asking me about the status of the buildings and i said i had two <laughs> i went <wasn't> lying 
I didn't say it was true in the trailer park. <laughs> when we walk into these French doors behind me right here, you're gonna walk into the second living room. This house has two living rooms, one being a den sort of area and the other one being kind of being a family room convertible type of room. Eventually, I have plans to knock out a wall, which is this wall right here. I have plans to knock that out and make it a total open concept throughout the main living space of the double wide. When I tell y'all we ain't cutting corners, we ain't cutting corners. We're knocking down walls. We're building on stuff. It, we're doing all the things. It has this really, really old carpet in it from the looks of it. I don't even know if it's ever been replaced. This looks like the carpet that was in my childhood single wide, which was about as old as this double wide was. So we'll be ripping that out and putting up some new flooring, as well as probably some subflooring too. The good thing about this double wide is the floors are not as weak as they are in my single wide, which my single wide, when we bought it, it was not taken very well care of. This house was taken very well care of. And she really made me think about, you know, maintaining your home and your land and stuff not on just a um or decor level like not that kind of updating but just structurally taking care of your home that's so important and this house proves how important that is because my single wide was a 2016 and it was in 10 times worse shape as this 1991 so that shows the difference in a mobile home your the life of your mobile home is how well you take care of it in all aspects not just new floors not you can't i mean you can't shine a turd really <laughs> proof of that i got makeup right now you can shine a turd but instead of shining a turd i want to leave this house when i die because this is the house that i will die in i mark my words mark my words this is the house i would die in i absolutely had no intentions on ever moving here and god so i had other plans so i i really didn't have a choice but to move from my single wide in the trailer park which was I considered it to be my forever home. I, I even said it was my forever home. So, so does Shane. But God had different plans. So I will go back and retract that and say I have no intentions on ever leaving this place unless God pushes me out of those doors. I mean, you got to push me, Lord. If you want me to leave, he's going to have to roll me out of here. <laughs> I'm going down with the double eye. <laughs> So the den has this really pretty fireplace too. This is an area of the home that has to be updated. We actually can't use this fireplace until we have somebody come in and clean out the, what is it, a flute? Fluke? Some sort of flute fluke or something like that. They have to come in here and do that because it's dangerously clogged up. So we can't use it, but it does burn wood. It's not gas or anything. I'm really excited to use it and I'm really excited to play with the shelving on each side of the fireplace. Off to the side here you have this little cove-like area and that cove-like area goes into the kids bedroom and the kids bathroom. There's each a kids bedroom on each side of the bathroom and I love this little cove area because I can just picture all the farmhouse doors. All the farm doors. <laughs> um, I'm doing the, my inspections. <laughs> Shane's doing his inspections. It's right. passing. <laughs> like we haven't already had enough of that it's with this passing. home buying process. I'll definitely update you guys probably at the end of this video on how the home buying process went in case you guys are looking to buy a house, a double wide, and you're as ignorant about it as I am. Not ignorant in a mean way, just ignorant in an honest way. I'll kind of break it down at the end of this video and tell you how we came about owning this place. <laughs> so this woman had really cute paint options in these rooms there's pink and there's like a dark dusty blue you could tell she really like spent time decorating this and it wasn't the traditional farmhouse neutral colors i liked it when i walked in here and i saw the colorful unique colors because i wasn't expecting that while she didn't do a lot of updates and a lot of the things in this house are old you can tell she really took time when it come to painting because the master bedroom is also painted a pretty color and the bathroom is painted some kind of color <laughs> this wall right here is the wall that i intend to knock out and on the other other side of this is the dining room and right across from the dining room is the family living space like the family living room where the TV will go stuff like that I don't want a TV or anything in the den I just want that to be a cozy area where you can come to kind of get away from anything electronic and just unwind read pray sit think whatever you want to do I want that area to be a screen free zone but the main living area will absolutely have our TV in it. Y'all know we're big TV people. So there's this little island that breaks up the dining room and the kitchen. And my idea around this is to take that completely out, that whole built-in area, 
create a different island, knock this wall that has those pretty mirrors on it. Because the other wall we're gonna knock out on the other side and have this big open concept kitchen. This little mini dishwasher is something I was not expecting. I did not realize how small it was until I got up close to it and I was like, wait a minute, this is a little mini dishwasher and it don't work. So we're gonna end up taking all these cabinets out, the sink, we're gonna move it and everything. And this is gonna look completely different by the time we're done with it. It's gonna be moved around every which way. So I'm really excited to get to work on that because I definitely am going to miss my dishwasher. I struggle enough with dishes without a dishwasher. I don't want to revert back to not having a dishwasher. Y'all, your girl will definitely be struggling. They'll be piled high to the ceiling. I'm using it coming into this house as a new start and just a fresh start and I'm going to try to just work on myself, work on my homemaking a lot better um, moving into this house. Kind of using this, this push into this house as also a push into a better homemaking routine and stuff for me too. I've been doing better over the years, but I definitely need to to work on some things. So I'm really excited to have a fresh start and to get to working on those things. This place does have a lot of closets. It has a closet here that has like the hot water heater sort of thing in it. I'm not really sure what's in here, but it has a little shelf on the top of it that we can store stuff on. It has this pantry over to the side of the fridge which I'm hoping our fridge will fit in here because our fridge is the only appliance other than our washer and dryer that we're bringing. I'm hoping the fridge will fit there, but right beside it we have that pantry, which is gonna come in handy. I see a total pantry makeover coming. And then we have a little linen closet here in the laundry room coming out of the kitchen. We have this little linen closet, which I can store whatever, towels, washcloths, washcloths. Um, I could even do like cleaning supplies, either one of those things. That's something I never had in my old house. I'm so excited to have. I was like, linen closet in the laundry room. Heck yeah. This laundry room is actually a pretty good size too. I mean, it's it's small. It's on the small side. But when it comes to mobile homes, it definitely is a step up from my laundry room in the single wide. There wasn't a lot of moving room. It was kind of just back, back in its own cove corner type of area. This one is an actual room. And one of the back doors lead out of that laundry room. Walking out of the family living room, you walk into the master bedroom and it's this pretty lilac color. Like I said, she got so, so unique when it comes to paint colors in her house. So unique. It's this gorgeous lilac color. The one thing I really love about this house is the sizes of the rooms are huge compared to the rooms in our single wide. The kids' rooms almost doubled in size. Now we don't have to have bunk beds in the kids' rooms. We can have twin size beds, one a piece for the kids and they will love that. Shane and I have also talked about building on a room for Colton if he wants that or maybe even turn in the dining room into a fourth bedroom. With so many rooms in here, you really have a limitless amount of things that you could do. So depending on what Colton wants, we may venture into that territory. But as for right now, we're just going to put two twin beds in here and it's a bigger space so they both have more room. That's there. I came in because I am sweating like crazy. I'm sitting over the vent. I have like my skirt canopied over the vent. I'm sweating y'all like I was drenched. But also my camera battery died so I had to come in here to change out the battery anyway. We have this huge walk-in closet. And something I also want to note is that there's a lot of mirrors in this house. There's even a mirror over the master bathtub. Um, <laughs> which is interesting. This bathroom has a separate tub from shower. So like it has a stand-up shower and then it has a just like lay-in kind of garden tub and it has a giant mirror over the top of it. It's definitely narrow. It's a very narrow bathroom and I think it's smaller than the bathroom in the single lot. I don't know for sure but it is definitely more narrow. So that was <laughs> it is definitely more narrow but I that's not, not... Have pee. yeah baby we have water on well, no, I didn't know, like, if you go and kind of be like, don't touch anything in this. You live here. I know. But I do like how we have two sinks, and we have, like, a he and she kind of, Jack and Jill, I think they call it, kind of sink. I like that because we didn't have two sinks in the bathroom in the single wide. We just had one big, long vanity and one sink. <laughs> So having two is going to be super nice, especially in the mornings. Now I'm going to take you outside and show you outdoors because the land is absolutely gorgeous. We have the prettiest view. Oh, my gosh. We got this hill that we walk up right here, and this takes you to the backyard. Almost the entire yard is usable. We go back into that property with the woods on it, but only by a little bit. Most of our land is cleared, except for this little pack of trees right here, which I love because it's just like in the middle of it. I don't know. It's the perfect medium between cleared land and tree land. All of this right here is our backyard. It goes on all the way back 
to that tree line back there. There's a fence. For the rest of this video, it's gonna look like I'm melting <laughs> because I had a sunburn and started peeling and then I caked a bunch of makeup on it and then I started sweating. So <laughs> my forehead is gonna look atrocious. It looks like I'm melting away, but I'm I'm okay, I promise. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, if I sound like giddy, it's because I just <laughs> stuff like this don't happen to me. <laughs> stuff like this don't happen to me. <sighs> stuff like this don't happen to me, y'all. They really don't have enough. How? How? Jesus, that's how. Jesus. Blown away. You can see a little bit of a fence there. It's a fence that goes all the way. Like I said, we go a little bit into those woods, but not by far. We go all along that fence that continues on way down there. Right here, like we have this little patch of trees right beside of our sheds here and the kids are wanting to put a projector between one of them and do like a, a little hammock area and i'm really excited to do that that was shane's idea and he got the kids really excited about it but look at that tree area oh my gosh here are our buildings we got a small one and a bigger one the small one i think shane said he was going to use it as his woodworking shed because it's actually not that small It's actually quite big, so Shane can keep all his stuff in here. He'll saw outside and stuff because we don't want we don't want him getting asthma. <laughs> but um, that's when he's thinking about keeping his stuff in. And this one over here, y'all have somewhere to put my Christmas stuff now. What Christmas stuff in? This does have a work woodworking table in it, so I asked him if he wanted this one, but he really likes that little one for woodworking. So he might take that one out and put it in the other. He might take that out and put it in the other one. I don't know, but oh, it's so pretty and big. I can store all my stuff here. Even has like little steps. You can step down. That's what it looks like from here. And then, like I said, you keep going all the way down to that fence. And that's where I'm wanting to put a llama. <laughs> I haven't got Shane talked into it yet, but that's where I'm wanting to put a llama. <laughs> this lady was such a good gardener. Like, we have maters over there in the flower garden. I'll show you guys, but... She has gorgeous flowers, y'all. Gorgeous flowers. There's the second porch. We have apple trees. We have two apple trees down there. We keep going all the way down to that fence line right there. So, like, all this is open land. I definitely want a garden next spring and summer. We got an old school thing to hang clothes on to dry makes me feel like a homesteader are we tapping into fearfully created 2.0 homesteading <laughs> fearfully created farmer john are we tapping into farmer john <laughs> so let me just do like a around the land can't even see all the land back there that we have this is another little area group of trees i want to get chickens these apples on the apple tree there's a bunch of them that have fallen. A ton of them on the ground. But there's a ton of them up in the tree still too. But, oh! <laughs> I've never owned an apple tree. Our property goes right up to the tree line right there. And here is the front yard. We have a close neighbors. There's that little area I just showed you, the neighbor's back area. And then we come around to the front yard, which is huge. We've got some of the prettiest trees. Look at these. I don't even know what these are called. But they're gorgeous. they got pink flowers on them. What is that? we even got a Lion King tree, y'all. What is that, though? That is gorgeous. So pink. Look how pretty that little... What is that? Clothesline is. This is the view from our front porch. You can see the hills over there. It's so pretty. That is so pretty. I'm going to be out here all the time looking at that view and our driveway goes like a quarter of a mile down the road you can hear the bugs you can't hear stuff like that in the trailer park we even have this little garden area she made our driveway is this asphalt stuff that we actually have a water hose hookup now we didn't have that in the trailer then we step up onto the big porch
And then right over here, we step down from the big porch and we have a walkway to the second back porch. And here, we got tomatoes. Like, we had more, but they must have took them whenever they left. Got tomatoes. We had a bunch over here. We got gorgeous flowers. I actually just realized these are solar flowers, <laughs> not actual flowers. I was wondering how they stayed so vibrant. <laughs> She really knew what she was doing with flowers. Some sort of bush over here. I hate to like take all this out, but I really don't know how to take care of it. Not like she did. I know it's been a struggle. I know you've had some pain I know you feel tired Held down by all the way Yeah, I know you're feeling lonely Your smile ain't the same I saw you where to go from here I feel like you've lost your way Thanks, Shane. <laughs> I promised I would get on here at the end and kind of give y'all a rundown of how we got this in case there's other people looking to buy right now or they're like first time home buyers or they're wanting to buy a mobile home, something like that. You can only get a loan like a USDA loan, FHA, VA, I think even a conventional loan if the trailer is on permanent foundation, which this one happens to be. The sellers did have to go in and update the foundation because it had been its foundation since 91, so it wasn't up to code. So they had that all done, so now we have all new foundation underneath, and it's basically just anchors that anchor it into the ground in case there's a storm coming or something. 
I always thought you went through a loan officer to get a loan. And while you do go through one, it's really up to the underwriter whether they give you one or not. The loan officer has to create this package and they send it off to the processor, the closing coordinator, and basically the underwriter's assistant. And then the underwriter goes in and checks your credit really good, your um, credit usage, any delinquents on your account, any late payments, negative fees, anything like that on your bank. And if you don't have any of those, then you're good to go. They don't, they, if they do come back with approved with conditions, it's usually just for extra paperwork. They would have needed it in the beginning anyway. The loan officer just forgot to put it in the package. Or maybe they didn't have that document at the time of making the package. There's inspections, there's appraisals, there's re-inspections, there's re-appraisals. I'm gonna and as the buyer stand right here. As the buyer, we paid for all of that. So we paid around eight hundred dollars for an appraisal and two fifty for a reappraisal. And then we paid five hundred for an inspection. I think five hundred. We yeah, five hundred for an inspection. Yeah. And then how much for re-inspection? Uh, we didn't have to pay for the re-inspection. We didn't have to pay for the re-inspection. You have to, sometimes you have th something called escrow, and it's where you just make a payment towards the buyer when putting in an offer that says, yeah, we're serious about this house. So we made a $2,000 okay. escrow payment because, what? What was that? I think that's dead. Ew. <laughs> I did it again. You might be mad. I think it is. I went through the mud there. I think it's mud. Okay. I think you're okay. Um, False alarm. <laughs> the escrow payment with the FHA just basically tells the buyer you're serious about it when you put in your offer. And it also goes into your home loan kind of in, with your escrow because with our home loan, our home taxes and our home insurance is all put together into one house payment. This is the second house that we looked at and I walked right into the den there and I was like, let's put an offer on it without even seeing the rest of the house. Did I? Yeah, it was, I, next it, to it was up to me to actually walk around and look things over. It was close to Nanny, and it was a double wide on acreage. That's all I asked for. That's all I wanted. Anything else, I was like, it's a bonus, and anything wrong with it, I knew we could fix. So we had, so we saw this place, put an offer in, and our offer was accepted all within like a six hour period. It was really fast. <laughs> After you put an offer in, that's whenever you do the insurance, the escrow, and the appraisal I was telling you about. And then at the end, once the appraisal comes in, which our appraisal came in significantly lower, so we actually got a way cheaper house payment than we thought we were going to get because the house wasn't as expensive as the listers listed it. It was worth $60,000 cheaper, so that brought down our payment a lot as well as the overall cost we'll have to pay to pay this house off. The, the most stressful part of buying a house is definitely the underwriting process because they literally can say yes or no. And if they say no, you can appeal it, but really nobody can change their no. So that's really, uh, that's really nerve wracking, especially when they're waiting to like the last minute to approve, which was our case. We got, a, our underwriter gave us the clear to close two days before closing, two days before closing, which we pretty much knew that we had given them everything. And we, we didn't have like delinquencies. My payment history is 100%. It's I always make a payment and I always make it on time. So we didn't have any of that to worry about. So it kind of went easy. It just went really slow. <laughs> But even if you do have late payments and stuff like that, they'll work with you. They really just care about your debt to income ratio and your overall used credit. They also go off credit score, but FHA, we had to have 3.5, so we had to have 3% down. FHA, you can have between 3 to 5% down. 3% if your credit score is over 580 and 5% if your credit score is under 580. So we had to put 3% down. We didn't get a whole lot of concessions because because the owners came down on the price so much when the appraisal went down, so we didn't have a whole lot of concessions from the seller. We had to come out with a lot out of pocket, but I had been saving for this and just never thought it would be possible. And then I put all my envelopes together to make it possible. <laughs> Once closing day gets here, you're pretty much good to go. I just spent a crap ton of time signing papers. <laughs> My hand cramped up. It was a long 45 minutes, but it was worth it because at the end you get your key. It's it's definitely daunting, especially when you don't know what to do, but it's definitely doable. People buy houses all the time and you just gotta remind yourself of that. All those people don't have perfect credit scores. All those people don't have perfect payment histories. All those people don't have perfect anything. Some of them do, but a lot of them don't. And we came to learn too that there's a lot of people in this business that they answered all of our questions. We had the best team on the planet. They were the best team I could have. I couldn't have handpicked on my better myself. Like God just was like, let's orchestrate all this and get it done really fast. 
I'm actually about to go pick up the kids because we just got done closing. This is our first time in the house and I wanted to bring you guys along with me. We're going to go pick up the kids and I'm going to try to bring Nanny over here so she can see it because she is so excited to see it. She cannot wait. So I'm hoping that she's having a good day and I can get her over here to see it. I do want to say one thing before I leave though. While God made this 100% possible, he made it possible through you guys and I want to thank you for being here and for believing in me and for being kind to me and for always showing up. I have the best, most loyal community on this platform and I'll say that until the day I die, but I could not have done this without you. You guys have changed my life and I really want you to realize that when I say that. I don't want it to go over your head. I want you to really realize that you've changed my life. I don't go hungry no more. I've gained weight, y'all. <laughs> Can I blame that on you? <laughs> this is all your fault. But I, I was, one thing we didn't talk about is I was a lot smaller back in the day and that wasn't just due to the fact that I wanted to lose weight. Sometimes we were hungry. <laughs> Them bologna sandwiches don't fatten you up. <laughs> Seriously, those those bologna sandwiches were were amazing at, at some point. You know? Hey, you can fry them in the morning, mm -hmm. you can eat them on a sandwich, mm -hmm. and then you can bake them at night. <laughs> I don't want that to go over your head when I say thank you because I'm really honest to God I know I couldn't have done it without you guys. And that's what keeps me humble on this platform is I know I remember who I was without you guys and I remember what I went through without you guys. And I will never forget that going forward, no matter where I'm at, no matter what happens with the channel, I know where I came from. And I know that if it were not for you guys, I would still be there. God has absolutely orchestrated and used you guys in a bigger way that he could ever use me. You completely changed my life. This wasn't just a God using me kind of thing. While he does use me on this platform, he uses you guys too. And he used you guys to literally change my life and put me in a position from where I needed help to where I could help others. It really means the world to us because we've said it time and time again, we don't see anybody as subscribers or anything like that. We legitimately see you guys as friends. You're there for us in so many ways. You, So many of you pray for us and, and all this other stuff and we're thankful for it. You guys do across the screen what we've never had anybody do in person outside of family for us. Like we don't have friends and limited family that family. pray for us yeah. in person. We're not very well known locally. We don't have a lot of people in our area other than close family members. You guys are it for us. You are family. You're our family. <laughs> I did not want this huge milestone to go by without thanking God first and foremost, but without thanking you guys too. Because when I tell y'all you did this, I mean you did this. You really did do this. And I will forever be grateful and I will forever feel like I owe you guys something in return for that because you literally made my dreams come true. You really did. Like you made my dream of owning a double wide on land come true. Oh, I thank you guys. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I hope y'all have a blessed morning, even not. Whatever it is, wherever you're at, know that I love you, but Jesus, he loves you loves so you much. So more. much more. <sighs> hey, hey, we can't we can't close it out with I'll see y'all later. Let's get to making over this double wide into <laughs> our mobile mansion. You guys might actually see like me get some muscles after this one. <laughs> I might go from flab to fab, you know what I'm saying? We've well, shown you guys you can do trailer park living and be so happy and turn a trailer in a trailer park into a mobile mansion. Now we're gonna show you how to, show you how to do a double wide. Now we're gonna show you how to do an old double wide. 1991. Fifthly created 2.0. 30 year old oh. double wide. Yeah!